Hey guys, this is Douglas Rumba. Um, so I haven't made very many videos lately, any videos lately. It's been three months since my last upload, I think, and that's college. I have some free time now, though, so I figured I'd make another video. This is going to be a quick one. What happens whenever uh, someone who is new to Linux decides to start making tutorials? Well, he's going to screw up, and I did screw up. It's not a major thing, and if it was just for this one screw up I wouldn't be remaking this video but I'm in the original video I believe it's my terminal tutorial episode 3 which is on the sudo command and the su command I mistakenly referred to sudo and su as super user and super user do respectively that is incorrect sudo stands for substitute user do and su stands for substitute user. There's some extra functionality with these commands that I missed as well and I want to make a new video that touches on that functionality. I don't know if I will actually delete the original video but I will certainly link this one in it. Well, let's get started then. I'll just recap what was in the original video. Uh, the sudo command. Sudo, let me clear this, sudo stands for uh, substitute user do and it allows you to temporarily assume the credentials of another user the permissions of that user without actually logging into that user's account this is very useful from an administrative standpoint the most common use for it is to substitute as root and that is originally when I made the video the only thing I thought you could do with it but as it turns out you can substitute into any user that you want which really could come in handy and I will touch on that later when I do a video on permissions which is an incredibly complicated topic well not so complicated but deep and very it's an interesting subject and definitely warrants its own video but I will just briefly mention permissions here users have certain permissions to read, write, and execute files. The, these permissions are given based off the creator of the file, the members of the creator's group, and everyone else. So if you cr create a file as a different user and um, or a different user on your computer creates a file and has the permissions set such that only they are allowed to edit it, but you want to edit it, and you can actually substitute user do, use sudo to assume their permissions and or edit that document as if you were logged into their account. It's very useful in that regard. As far as the syntax of it goes, if you simply type in sudo and then the command, it'll run that command as root. However, if you want to run the command as a user other than root, you have to type in minus u and then that user's username. I'll give an example of that briefly. We'll open though with running as root. Uh, this is useful because there are some configuration files that you can only edit as root. An example of this, if I were to say, um, we'll edit my hosts file, nano slash etc slash hosts. So this is my host file, looks up host names and so on and so forth. If I were to edit this file, and we'll just put in some random jumbled junk into it, try, and we try and save, you'll notice it get, throws an error and says, permission is denied. I can't make any changes to this document. However, if I were to run sudo, it's going to prompt me for my password. This is the password for user Douglas, not the password for the user you're trying to swap into. And now if I were to make an edit, and I won't because host is kind of important, but if I were to edit it now, I would be the root user. Actually, yeah, I'll just throw in an edit. I can fix it later. So yes, boom, the edit went through. And I can go back in and we'll fix the damage. A few notes about running sudo in this manner. The default login time is five minutes. This can be edited through configuration files. What that effectively means is that when you type in sudo for the first time, it'll prompt you for the password. 
like it did up there. And you notice the second time it didn't. After five minutes pass, it's going to start asking me for the password again. In addition, if I were to exit this particular sh um, terminal and open up a new one and do sudo nano slash etc slash host, it's going to prompt me for the password again. I'm going to do a keyboard interrupt on that. So keep those, keep that in mind. If you want to swap into a different user, in this case, um, I created prior to this vi running this video a user named Doug, which is very original. Uh, <laughs> I probably should have done something a little different, but uh, we can just do. I can demonstrate that quickly if I do sudo minus u Doug slash etc. Or well, if I told what to do, nano slash etc slash hosts. And now I'm editing this file as Doug. And because Doug isn't root, I still, as you can see down here, have no right permissions. I'll just exit out of that. Clean that up. Some, uh, some distributions, especially those that don't have sudo pre-installed like Arch Linux, and I noticed Fedora does this as well when I tried to use that last time. It doesn't automatically put your user into the sudoers file, which means that sudo won't work for your user unless you tell it that your user is allowed to use sudo. And there's a, there's a very simple fix to that. It's just an edit to a configuration file. And here's an interesting note about this configuration file. If I were to go nano slash etc slash sudoers, I can't even see it. Error reading, permission denied. In order to edit it, you have to log or you have to log in as root. So either log into the root account of your computer or um, use the su command, which I'll touch on later. For now, I'm just going to sudo into it though. There we go. So this is the sudoers file. You'll notice it says you have to use vsudo. Now that's not necessarily true. It's recommended because small syntax errors will completely destroy the sudoers file and you'll have to reinstall sudo in some cases. But for this user privilege edit, it's very simple and just be careful and you can edit it in whatever you want. That's what I did. You have to insert the name of your user's account, in this case Douglas, and then all equals all all. And these define what sort of commands you can use and what users you can uh, sudo into. All equals all all is good for your account. If you want to get into more s the server administrative side and you have to fool around with giving different users different sudo privileges, then you change this line here, as well as some of these other lines. All right, so that's sudo. But if you don't have sudo on your computer and you need to put your user into the sudoers file, what are you going to do? You can log in as root, but that requires logging out and then logging back in, and sometimes root isn't set up well and it's not at all obvious and so on and so forth. Well, this is where the substitute user comes in. That's su. So if I would just type in su and just su, that's going to log me in as the root. Here is an important difference between sudo and su, though. In sudo, when it prompts you for a password, it wants your user's password. If I try and enter my user password, it's not going to let me in at all. Authentication failure. It wants the password of the account that you're swapping into. So just default, it's swapping into root. So you have to enter in your root password. And now, as you can see, I'm logged in as root at Douglas Laptop Douglas, and then the, the, the pound symbol here, hashtag, pound, sharp, whatever, number sign, whatever you want to call it, that signifies that I'm logged in as root. In order to exit, you just type in exit, and that'll exit you out of your, that session and put you back into your normal user. Su, using su, you can also log into a different user, the same syntax, su, and then Doug. You just type in the username. There's nothing special there. And then enter in that user's password. And Doug at Douglas 
so on and so forth. That's Sue for you. You can see where both of these commands would be very useful. A word of warning regarding sudo and sudo, particularly sudo, is that there's a reason that a lot of these configuration files can't be edited outside of root. It's very easy to screw up your computer if you mess around in these configuration files without knowing what you're doing. So before you use sudo to edit a configuration file like hosts, make sure you know exactly what you're doing because you do not want to break your computer. A good example of this is um, the fstab, which governs file or the mounting of file systems at boot. I'll cover this particular um, document configuration file in length in a later video. You don't want to screw around with this unless you know what you're doing. And the problem with fstab that I noticed is the first time I tried to film this video, I used fstab instead of hosts as my example, and it turned out to be a bad example because it appears as though, at least on my computer, I can edit the fstab without being logged in as root, and I might want to fix that that's a simple command to do that and I'll again I'll touch on that command when I do my video on permissions alright so that is sudo and su the right way I will link in the description the arch wiki page on the sudo command which goes far more in depth with sudo and configuration for sudo than I did here if you're at all interested you can read that and sue is pretty straightforward. Again, if there, you have other questions, you can leave them in the comments. And also, don't forget, you can always consult the man page, which has very useful information and, especially for sudo, very extensive information about the command and how it works. And you can always check that if you have a question on syntax or on what these different modifiers do. There's a lot to it, a lot more than I covered, but. The average user will not use any of this, which is why I didn't cover it. All right, so thank you for watching this video on the sudo and the su command. I appreciate your viewership, and I will see you all again real soon. School lets out in two weeks, and I should be able to fall into a fairly consistent video recording schedule then if I don't do it earlier with finals coming up. It seems a very bad time to be getting back into this. We'll see how it turns out. So thank you for watching and have a great day.